Hello and welcome in this video we will talk about the Visionaire cipher. The Visionaire cipher is a way to encode your input strings in a way that is very difficult to read. Of course it's not a very strong cipher, it's easily breakable, however sometimes it crops up in interview questions so it's good that you know how to implement it. It is very similar to the Caesar cipher in that it shifts the characters by a number of letters. So for example if we have the string containing the characters hello and we have a key with the value of three each character would be shifted to the right by three letters so for example the letter h would move on to the right by three characters so we have h i j and then we have k so h over here becomes the letter k the letter e if we shift it to the right by three letters we have the letter e then we have f then we have G and then we have H. So the letter E becomes the letter H and so on. The letter L, if we shift it forward by three characters, becomes O. The letter L again becomes O and the letter O becomes the letter R. Now in the Viginaire cipher, instead of having one key, instead of just having three over here, we have a list of keys. For example, we might have the list of three then four and then one. And we apply this key on each letter of our input string. So we have three over here, then we have four, then we have one, and then we start repeating again. So we have three, then we have four, and let's make our input string a bit longer. Let's write hello world, W-O-R-L-D, and we continue in this pattern. Over here again, after four, we have one, then we have three again, four, one, three, we keep on repeating this sequence of our key, the three, four, and one. Now it's just a matter of shifting each letter by its key. So H, if we shift it to the right by three, becomes the letter K. The letter E, if we shift it to the right by four, let's work it out. We have E, then we have F, then we have G, then H, then I. We have simply shifted the letter E by four characters. Of course, this is the English alphabet we're using over here. So E becomes I. L, if we shift it forward only one space, becomes M. L, if we shift it forward by three spaces, becomes O. Notice here that this is the advantage over the Caesar cipher, that even though we have the same characters, L and L, it gave us different outputs. It gave us the letter M and the letter O. If we continue working this out, O shifted forward by four, becomes S, W becomes X, O forward three spaces becomes R, R becomes V, then M, and finally G. One thing to mention is that if we want to shift a character towards the end of the alphabet, for example Y, and we want to shift it forward past the letters of the alphabet, so Y shifted forward by three spaces, it will go past Z, we would rotate back to A. So we would have Z, A, and B. If we shift Y forward three letters, we go back to the letter B. Now that we understand how the cipher works, let's move on to the code to implement this. Let's start building this algorithm slowly. And the first step is to convert each letter in our input to be a number. So in this way, we can shift it forward by the number of keys that we want. So for example, if we have the letter A, we want it to become the letter D if the shift is three. And a way to do that is to convert this character into the ASCII equivalent. There is a table that converts each letter in the English alphabet into an integer, into a number. So if we do ORD of any character that we want and we print the return value of the string, if we go ahead and run this function, it will give us the return value of 97. The letter A in ASCII equivalent is 97. So we have converted a character into numbers. Now to make things simpler, let's restrict ourselves to just the English alphabet and also to just lowercase letters. We can make it work for any character or any punctuation marks. However, for this video, let's keep things simple. So what we can do is we can shift everything back by 97, meaning that the letter A this time will be zero. If we run this script again, it will give us zero because ASCII of A is 97, minus 97 is zero. So now if we use B instead of A, and again, we run this, it gives us one. 
and so on. We can try again with C and it will give us two. Now it's just a matter of shifting it forward by our key. So let's say we have to apply a shift of three. Here we would just do plus shift and the letter C instead of being two, it will become five. And the next step is to convert this number, this five number back into the letter equivalent. So let's do println character. This is another Python function that you give it an integer. This time it will be five and we have to shift it forward again by 97 characters because over here we have subtracted 97 and if we run it, it will give us F. So the letter C shifted forward by three characters gives us F. So we already have a little bit of our algorithm. There is a slight problem over here in that if we use this to have the letter Z instead of C and I go ahead and run this, it will give me the return value of 28. As you know, there are 26 characters in the English alphabet. So 28 pushes us past that 26 character limit. So we can wrap around by using the mod operator. We do the return value of this mod by 26. 26 is the total number of characters in the English alphabet. So if we run it, this time it will give us two. This mod operator pushes the values that go past 26 back to the start. So now the letter Z shifted forward by three characters, if we put two over here, will give us the character C. Remember that in our cipher, we don't just need to shift by one key. In fact, we have a list of keys. We have, for example, the three, the four and the one. And we have to pick one of these keys one at a time. First, we pick the three, then we pick the four, then we pick the one and then we go back to three four, one, and so on. So the shift variable needs to change on each letter of our input string. How do we do that? We select the keys at position i, i being a variable in a loop, iterating over every single character that we have in our input string. We will have the same problem over here once i exceeds the size of our keys list. So what do we do? We wrap around again this list. We do mod length of keys. This ensures that when we go past the last item, we come back to the first one. So now we have all the building blocks. It's just a matter of writing the function. Let's write a function and let's call it visionaire cipher, accepting two parameters, the string and the keys. And let's remove this and move our three lines so they are inside our function. We also need a result variable to store our resulting encrypted string. Initially it's going to be empty and we will keep on adding characters to this empty string. Now we just need a loop to iterate over every single character that we have. So we say for i and c in and we enumerate the input string that we have. This variable c will contain each character that we have in our input string and i will be the index of that character inside that string. And let's align these properly inside this loop. And now we choose the shift depending on the key. And we are choosing the key at i mod length of keys. We are not going to print this value. Instead, we are going to store the result in a variable called cipher i. And in addition over here, it's not Z that I need to pass, but the character C. Remember that C will be each character in our input string. And in our final line over here, we just need to remove this print and add to our result variable. And over here, instead of using two, we just need to use the variable cipher I. Finally, as the last line in our algorithm, we just need to return the result. And this is it. This is our full implementation of the cipher algorithm. Over here, I pasted an example calling the function that we have just written and it's passing in the hello world input string using the same keys that we saw before the three, the four and the one. And if we go ahead and run it, it will give us the correct cipher string. And in fact, one way to check it is to call again this function with the string that was outputted and negate the keys instead of three, four and one, we pass minus three, minus four and minus one. This way we are shifting each character backwards. And if we run it, it gives us the correct output, the hello world string, just to prove that our algorithm is correct. If you enjoy these kind of coding videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and also in the comments below, suggest any algorithm you might like to see.